Hello everyone. It's Nicole Steele of the Joyful Stamper. I'm the owner of that. I have a blog and I'm just going to pull my screen up. Just give me a second here, please. There I am. Okay. Make it a little bigger. I have to put my laptop a little far away so I can't see so much of the comments, but okay. Here I am. Oh, hi Kim. Oh, thanks for joining to me, me today so I don't have to stamp alone. <laughs> you know, it's one of those days I'm actually sitting here still in the shorts and t-shirt I slept in. I had my alarm set for 4.30 a.m. because I was going to get up and go to the Y and I think I remember turning it off because I didn't get up till 8 a.m. So yeah, you know, every now and then you need to sleep in, right, and catch up on your rest. So so whether you're joining me live or you're watching the replay, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch me and come stamp with me. I have two things that are actually quite new to me to show you today. Um, so the other night, the team that I'm on had a mystery stamping hour and I actually host them myself. I have a special Facebook group for them and you're welcome to join it. It's totally free and I announce on that page when the next dates are. But the team that I'm on had one and we made this easel card and I loved it so much and it was so, it really is so simple and it's a fun fold. It's something different. So I thought I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So now this, I used a retired stamp set. It's called Wanted. It's from years and years and years ago. But I, I do, I like using retired stuff every now and then, you know, because they don't go bad and they're fun, right? But I am going to use a current set called High Tide to make this card, um, this easel card, a masculine, a masculine version of it. And then I'm going to also make what's called a slimline card. And I actually don't even have a sample for that because I'm making it on the fly. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes, right? You know? Okay, so let me set that aside. Here's the thing of beauty to behold. This is the cover of the holiday mini catalog. I can't open it. Um, August 1st, I think, is when it goes live to every, oh, August 4th. So August 4th, customers will be able to order from this. Demonstrators are able to order now, and I have a multi-page order ready to submit later on today. So I'm gonna have lots of new things to show you guys, but don't you love this cover? Look at that poinsettia set right there. I'm getting that. I love layering things and I want to make a framed sampler piece with all of those poinsettias as a Christmas decor item and the snowflakes that's going on my list too. So if you want one of these beauties, um, if you want to be automatically put on my list, just submit an order, place an order with me in my store, shop with Nicole.stampinup.net and you will automatically be on my list to get one of these. No need to even ask me. The added bonus too is there's bonus days going on. So for every $50 you order, you're going to get a $5 coupon code to spend in August and you can use it for this catalog or the new stamp and cut and emboss machine. So you have every reason to order. Why wouldn't you? And then you can get one of these beauties and start all your holiday projects early. So that's a good deal. But you can always email me too to get one of these. Nicole um, at thejoyfulstamper.com. So, all right, super excited about this. So... Let's get started, right? Yeah, let's stamp. Okay, so this easel card, I told you I was gonna make it a little more masculine and I'm gonna be using the High Tide stamp set and my sentiments are going to come from Timeless Tropical because I want to make this a birthday card. My brother has a birthday coming up so I'm going to send this to him. He lives in New England and I think the lighthouses would be perfect, don't you? Okay, so we're starting with a piece of Sahara sand and it's four and a half, no, excuse me, four and a quarter inches by 11 inches. And I'm going to score it, let me see my notes, at two and three quarters. So I have it, I have the 11 inch side placed up along the top of my scoreboard. And I'm gonna score it at two and three quarters of an inch. Now if you have a stamp and trimmer, it has a scoring blade on it. So you can use your trimmer to score it also. And five and a half inches. So I scored it two and three quarters and five and a half inches. And now I can put this away. Hi, Lisa. Hey, I'm getting so many compliments on my hair color. So thank you. We'll be back out. <laughs> you really are the best. Um, so okay, I've got that. 
and now I am going to fold this. So I'm folding it like that, and then I'm folding it again like this. So as you can see, this is going to go like that, all right? And I'll show you how we're going to make it stand up. But we can set that piece aside for now. We don't need it. The next thing you're going to do is pull out three colors of cardstock. And they're each going to be three and three quarters of an inch by one and one quarter of an inch. So I have Knight of Navy, Cherry Cobbler, and Balmy Blue. And now I'm going to stamp randomly some patterns on this. So... I think we're going to do water and grass and I'm not really sure what else so I'll get my stuff set up so do you guys like lighthouses have you ever been inside of one I was a nanny in New England for four summers while I was in college and um, I got to tour some lighthouses when I was up there so it's um yeah, they're really cool inside, and they're they're beautiful to look at. In fact, I used to run by one um, when I lived up there. You know, it's really hard to talk and stamp at the same time. <laughs> do you guys have trouble multitasking? Yeah, I do. I'm trying to figure out which one. So I want, I think I want this water to go with the Knight of Navy, and I want my grass, I think, to go with Cherry Cobbler. And I'm trying to think what I could use for this third set over here. Um, I think I'm going to use some sand. Yes. Let's take some sand. We'll do balmy blue for the sand. Okay. So I'm inking up this grass and cherry cobbler and it appears my stamps are not very sticky. Hey, if this ever happens to you where your clear stamps are not sticking to your block, all you have to do is take them up to your kitchen sink and wash them with a little dish soap. Dish soap, um, some warm water, and they'll be good as new. And I clearly need to do that with my high tide stamp set. Just be careful though, because some of these sets have some pretty tiny stamps in them and you don't want them going down the drain. That would be horrible. So just be careful with that. So that was cherry cobbler, um, stamped on cherry cobbler cardstock. And now we're gonna use Knight of Navy to stamp the water image from the high tide set. And I'm just gonna go all down this piece here. The thing I like about random stamping is you don't have to worry about being perfect. Because Lord knows I'm not perfect. Ugh. Okay, so here's the thing. I don't have a balmy blue ink pad. So what I'm going to do instead is use my Versamark pad. I inked it up super good so I could get a good impression here. And Versamark's a clear ink. So what it does is it creates sort of like a watermark background on your paper. And you can see it's sticky because when I'm lifting up my stamp, it's lifting up off the table. So this is really, really a good versatile all around ink pad to have because as you can see, you can use it when you don't actually have the same color of ink as your cardstock. It gives it a nice watermark tone on tone effect. So you get kind of the same effect there and you can also heat emboss with it too. So super handy to have around. All right. Now I've got ink all over my fingers because isn't that the way it is with red ink? It just goes everywhere. So I have a four inch by four inch piece of Whisper White cardstock and these are going to get glued onto there. But before I do that, we're going to trim these down. So, um, of course my cutter is miles and miles away. So let me pull out my paper trimmer. Okay. I work in a really, really tight area here. Now these strips, we're going to turn them this way and we're going to cut them at one and a quarter inches a piece. So I'm going to line this up and there's one square and we're going to, we're going to do this to all three of these. And just make sure you make a nice neat little stack there so that you don't lose them. And we're going to make a quilted pattern out of these on that Whisper White cardstock. Now, this trimmer, guys, you aren't gonna believe how old this is, but my piece moved a little bit, let me adjust it. You're not gonna believe how old this trimmer is, seriously. It is 20 years old. This was the very first thing that I bought when I started scrapbooking 
when I was like 24 years old. Um, and for sentimental reasons, I just can't bear to part with it. Yeah, I know Stampin' Up! has a Stampin' Trimmer and I know it's gotten really great reviews, but I just can't get rid of, you know, what I had from the very beginning. It's just so nostalgic for me. So if you are into stamping and scrapbooking, um, when did you guys first start? I'm curious about that because some people are new, some people have been doing it for years. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just going to arrange these into a layout and honestly there is no right or wrong to any of this. There really isn't. So just do what you want to do. I'm going to lay them like that and I'm just going to put a really small amount of liquid glue on the back of those and I'm going to start positioning them. Now you want to try and get a nice little neat even border around there but I'm actually not going to worry about it too too much because again it's a handmade card so it'll be fine. And also to this liquid glue it gives you time to reposition stuff so you have some wiggle room here with these pieces. Now Kim I think you didn't you play in stamping mystery stamping night the other night so you probably already made one of these. But this was a new to me fun fold. And honestly, I normally don't go for fun folds. Um, I love pretty straightforward cards, but I love to layer them. I hope I think I want my water to go the proper way. That would bother me if I turned it sideways. Okay. And you might have to do, if you didn't cut your squares totally perfect and straight, you can do a little finagling and overlapping and it's all gonna be okay. So I was just at the beach last week and it was fun and I went jet skiing. Hi Sharon, you're fine, you're not too late. We just started, we're making an easel card. We're starting with the easel card. So I was at the beach last week and we went jet skiing for the first time and I know I posted that picture on my Facebook business page. Um, it was so fun, but I really, I really puttered along for the first, I don't know, 15 minutes. We were going so slow. We were in the back of the group. It was so embarrassing. And then, um, and then I got brave and whoa, look out. I had that thing going 50 miles an hour, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you are on the water, oh, it's really fast. Yeah. But it was so fun. I had the need for speed after I got comfortable with it. So I'm going to take my cherry cobbler ink pad and I'm taking the lighthouse from high tide. Now there's actually two lighthouse images in here. One is a solid image and one has the finer details. Anytime I have two step stamping like this, I always like to start with the detailed stamp first. I find it easier to line things up. If I stamp the detailed one first, then I stamp the solid one second. So for this instance, um, and for this particular stamp, I'm going to stamp the detailed one at full strength of cherry cobbler ink. The second one, the solid stamp, I'm going to ink it up and then stamp once on my scratch paper and then stamp it onto the detailed image. So you'll see what I mean. I'm going to do that right now. So full strength in cherry cobbler and I'm going to stamp it on my scrap piece of whisper white here and I made it a little skinny, didn't I? Okay, now I'm going to bring in the solid lighthouse image and that block's not big enough. Let's get a bigger one. Okay, and I'm going to ink this up in cherry cobbler also, but I'm going to stamp it off on my scratch paper first. Then I'm going to go ahead and line this up. So I got to pull this down so I can see it a little bit better. There we go. So you get those two shades of red there with just one ink pad. Okay, I'll set that aside. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fussy cut this out for my card. And I'm going to use paper snips for it. So this stamp set, no, does not have any coordinating dies to go with it. I have to tell you, this annual catalog has the most bundles I have ever seen in any Stampin' Up! catalog. So if you like dies, 
oh my word, this is your catalog for sure. Pretty much every stamp set in there seems to have a set of dies with it. It's crazy. Okay, I've got that out. Let me pull back in my card base here because we're going to need this now. We're going to start assembling everything. I have a one inch by four inch strip of balmy blue cardstock and I'm going to stamp my greeting on it. Now I'm pulling this from the Timeless Tropical set because I wanted this rest and relax, you deserve it. And I'm going to use my grid paper because this is a red rubber stamp and I can't see through it. I'm going to use my grid paper to line my stamp sentiment up straight on my block. I'm using the lines on here to look through my block and to put that on there. And I am going to uh, stamp that in Night of Navy ink on the balmy blue. So rest and relax. You deserve it. There we go. And the inside of my easel card is going to say, may your birthday be memorable. So while I have all that out, I think I'll put this on here too. And I know I have my stamp upside down. <laughs> have you ever done that? Put your stamp, your sentiment on your block and then you go to stamp it and you stamp it upside down. Yeah, I've done that. And I'm going to stamp this on the inside of my card and I'm going to do it towards the top half of it. So I have space below it to write a message. As I said, this is going to my brother. I just saw him last week and I'm going to see him again next week. So I don't need to be too wordy, wordy with my message. All right, this is going to get glued right down here and I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals because I do want that to be lifted. Now I'm at the end of my dimensional sheet here, but don't forget about these border pieces. Snip them down to the size you want and then you can use them on your projects. Okay, take that off. And I'm going to put this right along the bottom edge of this card, just like that. Okay, so can you see how this is going to come together now? This is why I put the dimensionals on this, because it lifts it enough that when you fold your easel card, the bottom part of it's going to tuck into that sentiment right there, so it'll stand up. Okay, this piece is going to get glued just to the bottom half right here. Now I can see it's a little bit uneven there. so. To kind of hide that, I'm going to go around it with my fingernail and sort of rough these edges up. Hi, Marianne. Okay, I'm telling you what, who knew you had such great stamping tools on the tips of your fingers, right? But you know me, I always like to distress. Any excuse for that is good. Now, if these uneven edges there totally bother you, again, you can go through with your fingernail or a pair of scissors and rough those up, or you can take your trimmer out and just lop it off till it's as even as you want it to be. But I'm just gonna go ahead with my fingernail and rough it up because, oh my gosh, I love the way that looks. Oh yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna glue this to my easel card right here. But as you can see, when I put this on, that top half is sticking up. So we don't want to put glue on this back part right here. We just want it on the bottom half. So what I find easiest to do is just put it right there rather than putting it on my stamped piece. And then I'm going to attach it like that. Now see, this is the nice thing about these easel cards. It's a fancy fold, but it lays flat and mails in a standard envelope with regular postage. So it's a really easy way to fancy your card up without incurring additional postage costs. Okay, so I die cut using the Stitch Shapes dies from Sahara Sand Cardstock, a circle. And from Cherry Cobbler Cardstock, I used the Layering Circles dies to die cut a scallop circle. I find those two sets, they nest together super well. So that was a really happy discovery. Anything that can stretch your dies farther and give you more uses at them is a winner. Okay, we're going to put that on the card. I'm going to put it right in the center there just with liquid glue. 
And I realized, yes, yeah, so I'm covering up that center square. So here's a tip. If you cut your squares uneven at all, make those the center squares so that your pieces will, um, you know what, I forgot to turn my lights on. Oh my word. Is that better? There we go. Oh my word. I can see better now. Oh, I'm such a ninny head sometimes. Seriously. What did I say about multitasking that I'm not good at it? Yeah, I forgot my lights. Oh. So now I'm going to put dimensionals on this because I want it to be lifted up off my card. So how has everyone's summer been going? Have you had to, well, have you had to cancel anything or had anything canceled on you or, you know what, the 4th of July is coming this weekend. Are you guys going to fireworks? I know they're having them here, but I'm going to tell you, my neighbors, they're crazy. They have been setting up fireworks for like a week now. My poor dog. My poor dog is going nuts. But we'll have our own little fireworks show probably right here in the neighborhood. <laughs> they fire off. Nothing quiet either. It's They go all out. Okay. Remember how I said I like to use retired products because this was a retired stamp set? This was in the last annual catalog. And it's Sahara Sand and Night of Navy Twine. But... You guys, it just goes so good with this high tide stamp set. So here's the thing. If you want to make this card, um, so if you order any of the supplies to make this easel card or whatever, um, just let me know and I will, I'll send you some of this so you can use it on your projects too because I've got a whole roll here. There's no need to be stingy with it. So just let me know um, and if you want it and... Uh, you're ordering stuff with to make these easel cards and I will I'll happily mail some to you it's not a problem okay so I'm gonna tie this here we go a bow a knot this is a masculine card um, I think I'm gonna do a knot let me see maybe I want it three times three times more is more right <laughs> do you ever feel like that about anything in your life well, I'm not holding back. More is more, man. Stamping, chocolate, ice cream, and actually, believe it or not, salad. I'm, yeah, I'm going to say it. Salad is my favorite food. I love all the different ways you can make a salad and all the different things you can put on it. In fact, usually at least one night a week in our house, our dinner, we have something called, that we call big salad. I think I may have gotten it from Seinfeld. And it's seriously, it's a salad that has everything on it. I put all kinds of leftovers on it. Um, we just pile stuff on. Roast a big pile of potatoes and throw it on top. And oh, it's so good. And I'm going to fray the ends of this twine just a little bit. And I'll tell you what, this next card I have, we go from masculine to girly girly. So, oh my gosh, I love this. Oh, that's so pretty. I love it. I feel like I need some little embellishments there, but this is a masculine card, so I'm just going to call it quits. So here's the two easel cards. And yes, my brother's going to get this, and I know he doesn't watch this, so I can totally say it. Oh, you ha you have this set, Sharon? You have the high tide set, and you don't have the twine? You know what? I'll send you some. Message me your address um, again, and uh, I can mail some to you, so... You can use it and you can make the card because I've got so much. I need to share it, right? So, okay, this is the first card. It's an easel card and I hope you like it. So we're going to go ahead and the next card we're going to make is called a slimline card. And I'm going to wipe these off while I tell you about it. Let me get some baby wipes. So I don't know if you've seen slimline cards. Um, they're becoming popular among stampers. But basically, it's a card that fits in a business-sized envelope. Thank you, Sharon. I'm glad you like both of them. They were super fun to make. And I'll tell you what. <laughs> you played mystery stamping because you're in my Facebook group. I was a little bit challenged playing it as a mystery stamping event um, because I was like, I'm not really sure how this folds. And I was doing it as a Z-fold and it wasn't working. And... Um, yeah, so as a mystery stamping event, it was definitely a challenge, but oh my goodness, it was so fun as a challenge. 
because I love using my brain and trying to figure things out and I definitely had to do it with that one without having a picture of the finished project. So hopefully you will have an easier time making this easel card knowing what it's supposed to look like <laughs> ahead of time, right? Okay. So a slimline card, they fit in a business sized envelope. And you can get these business sized envelopes at the Dollar Tree. You get like 80 of them or 40 of them or something for a buck. So I thought I would jump on the bandwagon and I'm going to make one. Now I will tell you, they do use a full sheet of cardstock. So you're only gonna get one card out of an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. So this is Pacific Point. Cut it down to seven inches by eight and a half inches. And then we're gonna put the seven inch side along the top of our scoreboard. And we're gonna score it right down the middle at three and a half inches. Okay, so I did not make a sample for this ahead of time. This is my first time making this card and I'm doing it live. So, we're just gonna go with it. So, you can see it's gonna fold like this, it can stand up like this, or, or you can make it long like that, however you want. I'm gonna do it this way because I'm gonna create a scene with Timeless tulips. Do you guys like flowers? I like stamped flowers. I do not garden, but I like stamped flowers. So we're gonna use this set and the punch and we're gonna create a garden on this card. And I have a piece of Whisper White that's gonna get matted on that. This Whisper White piece is three and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna set aside the Pacific Point because I don't wanna get my stuff on it and I have a tulip stem and I'm going to stamp it in garden green. And I'm just gonna stamp it randomly on this piece here. Okay, garden green. Now there's a bunch of different greens you can use. You can use pear pizzazz, you can use old olive, you can use mossy meadow. I love the brightness of this garden green. And I'm just going to put them everywhere because I want a very lush full tulip garden because quite frankly this is the only way I'm going to see a tulip garden I tend to mm, murder every plant that I have and my mother she's so optimistic she gets me seeds and you know she just has such high hopes for me as does my neighbor who is a master gardener and I'm okay for a while and then they die. It might be because I forget to water them. It might be because of that. I don't know. Okay, now here's the thing. I can always go back and stamp more stems later if I see that there are holes that need to be filled in. So, I'm keeping my stem stamp on the block. And now I'm gonna take this large tulip and I'm gonna pull out some scraps of Whisper White cardstock and I am going to stamp my tulips. And the color palette I'm going to use is Highland Heather, Pacific Point, and Bermuda Bay. Now, I don't have Bermuda Bay in a full-size pad. This came in a paper pumpkin kit, and I, it works just fine for me, so I'm using it. So Bermuda Bay, I'm going to stamp it right there. Okay, then I'm gonna wipe it off because I'm gonna switch ink colors. And we're gonna go with Highland Heather. Okay. And then we're gonna go with Pacific Point, which is also the same color as our card base. I'm so excited because I waited to order from the annual catalog until I was able to pre-order from this holiday catalog that is coming out um, August 4th for everyone. And I'm getting the new ink colors, all five of them, because I love working with them. Now I'm gonna use this punch to punch these tulips out. Now here's the thing, you can see this punch also pull, punches out a leaf stem. So I don't want to punch that, have that leaf stem go through my, my tulips here. 
So I'm gonna be very cognizant of how I punch, and I'm gonna start on the left hand side. That way as I work my way down, this is punching through, this leaf is punching through a part of the cardstock that I've already punched the flower out, so it'll be good. I won't ruin anything. So there's my Bermuda Bay, and this I'm gonna punch out Highland Heather next. So, Okay, and now I'm gonna punch out the Pacific Point one. Pacific Point is not a color that I use very often, so I was trying to challenge myself to use colors that I don't normally use. Get these scraps out of the way. Okay, and I'm gonna bring back my scene because I wanna see where I can put everything. Oh, Sharon, you is purple your favorite color, Sharon? Okay, those are gonna have dimensionals put on the back of them so that they pop off my card. Let me get some now. And then there's smaller tulips in this stamp set that I'm going to go ahead and use to fill in those spaces. And I might come back and punch out some bigger ones too. I don't know. This card is very organic today. We're just going to see what happens with it. Okay, let's start, yeah, let's do this one. And see this stem, just because it ends right there, doesn't mean you have to put your flower there. You can put it at any height you want, okay? Now let's stamp, let me, oops, let me keep this Pacific Point pad open. Oh Sharon, I have to tell you, I may have already told this story, but when I was a nanny in Boston, there was a store called Purplelicious, and everything it sold was purple. And my root college roommate at the time absolutely loved purple. It was her favorite color too. And so I took a picture for her and sent it to her. And that very next summer, <laughs> she joined me as a nanny with a uh, friend of the family. And she went there and she bought a lot. And that next year, our dorm was a riot of purple. Okay, so now I'm going to fill in. I'm going to use this small one. Um, let's take these off. Just lift them up a little bit because I'm going to stamp right there. And I'm going to use Pacific Point to stamp right here. There we go. Okay, got that put back down. Oh my gosh, I love that deep, deep blue of that Pacific, Pacific Point. That's really pretty. Okay, and I'm gonna stamp another one right there. Now I'm gonna come in with this slightly larger tulip and I'm going to use, wipe that blue ink off, and I'm gonna use um, Highland, no, I'm gonna use Bermuda Bay. That's what I wanna do. Ink that up. Wow, are they all the same shade of purple, Sharon? That must be so fun to go into your craft room and see that. That's really energizing. Okay, let's, mm, we're gonna have to do another little one there. And let's put this one right there. Okay, and I need to, I'm gonna do a Highland Heather one there in the very small stamp, so. Let's wipe this off. I'm gonna show you a little mask. We're gonna do a little masking on this because I don't want this to blend in with that one there. So what I'm gonna do is take a post-it note. So here you go. Getting a little technique lesson. And the part of, top part of this is sticky. So I'm going to stamp, and it doesn't matter what color you stamp it in, but I'm gonna stamp this image in on that sticky part. Then I'm going to take my paper snips and I'm going to cut it out just inside of the stamped image. You don't want, usually I'm telling you, oh yeah, make a cloud around your image when you're cut, fussy cutting it out. Well, with this masking technique, you don't want that cloud. You actually want to cut slightly inside the border of your stamped image. Okay. 
and you can get post-it notes that are entirely sticky. And now I'm gonna put it right over this flower right here. This is the one that I don't want to get that purple ink on, so that I'm masking it. Now I'm gonna stamp up with my Highland Heather, Heather, Highland Heather ink, and I'm going to stamp it right there. Then I'll peel this mask off, and it'll look like this purple flower is behind that blue flower. Isn't that neat? Oh, the fun things you can do with stamps, right? Okay, and let me pull back my card base because I wanna check and see how this looks. Okay, oh, I'm liking this. This is a little bit higher off my card than I want. Let me see if it fits in my envelope. Oh, it'll still fit in my envelope. Perfect. So it's okay that I went off my card a little bit. Now I have a piece of Highland Heather cardstock, and I'm going to trim this down, but I'm going to put my greeting on here. So let's see what my greeting should be. I could make it Mother's Day, but that's already passed. Get well soon. Happy birthday. An Easter card. Um, I think I'm going to do... I like this one. What a beautiful difference one single life makes because... It's true. I know a lot of people that I could send that to. And you can use it for just about any occasion, I think. Now, I don't have to worry about lining my sentiment up straight on this because it's a clear stamp, so I'll be able to see to stamp it clearly. Let me get all this green ink off. I don't want to catch an edge after I've put all this work into it. Now, the question is, what color do I stamp it in? Highland Heather, Pacific Point, um... Hmm. Do you guys have an opinion? What color I should stamp my sentiment in? Highland Heather, Pacific Point, Bermuda Bay. How about, actually, maybe I should just go with black. Simple black. That way it kind of stands out from the riot of color that this is. Because <laughs> it is a riot of color. This is definitely a new to me color combination. Okay, and I'm going to put this right in the middle so that I can trim this down. Yeah, because I definitely don't want it that long. So I'm gonna cut some ends off like this. And then I think I'm going to flag my ends. So I'm gonna make a snip down the middle and then go from the corner to the top of that snip and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. You know what I forgot to mention? I loosely based this card on a sample I saw in the annual catalog. I'll show you it. This one right here on page 21. I didn't use the same colors, but I just liked how it looked like a garden. So that's what my slimline card is loosely based upon. And, oh, yeah, Sharon, you came in late. Did you see the cover? That's the holiday catalog. So I'm going to put this on my card right here. And I am going to use dimensionals. I'm thinking I would like to make this skinnier, though. So I'm going to get a bigger piece, bigger pair of scissors, and I'm going to trim this down. I want more of my flowers to show. So, there we go. Hmm, this is really interesting, stamping on the fly, not having it planned ahead of time. Okay, so let's glue this down now. And I'm just going to use simple liquid glue for this. Um, other adhesives that would work would be the new Stampin' Seal. Or if you have any of the snail left, you can use snail too. And those are the tape runner versions of adhesive. So up on my blog, uh, was it a couple days ago? I had my, my blog post was about the different adhesives. And I put up a video about the new Stamp and Seal and Stamp and Seal Plus adhesives. And I also made a chart that shows you which Stampin' Up adhesives work with which medium. So like it's a chart, it lists all the adhesives on the left hand side and going across the top 
are things like cardstock, embellishments, large embellishments, die cuts, and there's an X in the box telling you which adhesive to use with which medium. So you can go ahead and download that, save it, whatever you want to do from my blog, thejoyfulstamper.com, and I hope you find it helpful. So now here's the next question. I have some white ribbon. This is retired ribbon because I ran out of the Whisper White crinkled seam binding ribbon that's in the annual catalog but the crinkled seam binding bit, ribbon will work just fine because it's white too so I've got white or I've got linen thread and I'm not sure which I like better like linen thread is a favorite of mine but I feel like I need to change it up and I'm gonna use white I'm gonna use white because I like how white ribbon gives a crisp clean feel to the project and that's the look I'm going for and I'm going to tie it in a bow. You know, sometimes I think that the only thing more terrifying and heart racing than speaking in public is tying a bow live. <laughs> okay, I'm exaggerating on that one. <laughs> Do you know, guys, here's a fun fact. I was a Stampin' Up! demonstrator back in 2006, and I ran it as a business then also. And the reason I signed up, I mean, of course I loved stamping and scrapbooking, but the original reason I signed up to be a business demonstrator was because I wanted to learn to be comfortable speaking in front of large groups of people. I want a bigger bow. Speaking in, uh, in front of large groups of people and having to think on my feet. And that, yeah, that's why I became a business demonstrator the first time. And it worked. It worked. To this day... I still feel more comfortable speaking in front of groups and thinking on the fly and improvising all because of all the workshops and classes I did 15 years ago. So Stampin' Up! is definitely more than just paper crafting and stamping, that's for sure. It taught me um, a lot of life skill lessons too, good ones, handy ones. All right, I'm liking how this card is turning out. I think I need one more dimensional in here, though, because I'm sticking it on ribbon. Okay. And let's put it right here. Oh, wow. I love this. I really, really do. Hmm, does it need something out? You know what? This isn't sticking to um, to my card base. It's sticking to the ribbon. Okay, we're going to fix that. I can't add more dimensionals to keep it from moving, but I can add some glue dots. So let's do that. Let's do that. I'm going to put one there, and I'm going to tuck one under right there. All right, now it's being held firmly in place. That is a nice, simple, clean card. Let me bring out the other two. I'll stand these up as easels. I hope you guys can can see them. Oh my gosh, I'm really happy with how these turned out. Oh, I hope you like these projects. Yeah, you'll have to, if you make an easel card or a slimline card, come back to this video and post it. and so I can see it because I like seeing all the different ways that people use um, their Stampin' Up! supplies because it gives me ideas too, you know? So, all right guys, well don't forget that it's bonus days this month. So you earn the $5 coupons or coupon codes with every $50 you order in my store, shopwithnicole.stampinup.net. And you can redeem those coupon codes next month in August. And my tip, use them to get stuff. From this right here my first number one item on this list is the Halloween suite I know not everybody celebrates Halloween or but I personally love making treat boxes for the trick-or-treaters I like making Halloween decor so that's why it's number one on my list and then I have a lot of Christmas sets on there poinsettias snowflakes gnomes oh can't wait so if you want a catalog um, just shoot me an email or if you just want to automatically be on the list just place an order and I will, they're on their way to me now, so I can get one in the mail to you, no problem, in a couple weeks here. 
So, all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me this morning. I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to stamp with me. And I hope you have a really super wonderful 4th of July. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.